Android was founded in Palo Alto, California in October 2003 by Andy Rubin, Rick Miner, Nick Sears and Chris White. In Rubin's words, smartphone mobile devices that are more aware of its owner's location and preferences was the point of Android. Their first intention was to develop a complex OS for digital cameras but, as you all know it today, that didn't happen, mainly because the market for those devices is not large enough. Instead, they made an OS for mobile devices to compete with Symbian and Microsoft Windows Mobile. Google bought Android Incorporated on August 17, 2007. Not much was known about Android by that time. When bought, most employees stayed at Android. Android 1.5 Cupcake Although this may not be the very first version of Android, it sure is one of the most important releases. On April 27, 2009, Android 1.5 update was released, based on Linux kernel 2.6. This was the first release to officially use a codename based on a dessert, Cupcake, a tradition that is present even today. This update included several new features and UI improvements. It was the first version of Android to support third-party keyboards with word prediction. Also with Cupcake, which was for made available. You could also record and playback MPEG-4 and 3GP videos for rights. Cupcake also included animations while navigating throughout the UI, copy-paste feature, upload to YouTube feature, auto-rotation option, and many, many more options were made available that are still present today. Android 1.6 Donuts Donut was released on September 15, 2009. It may not be as much of an upgrade as Cupcake was, but it did add some new features like a new camera interface, much better search and replaced. You also get a battery usage indicator telling you which app was draining your battery the most. One of the biggest highlights of Android Donut was the new and improved multilingual text-to-speech engine called Pico. It allowed any applications to speak a string of text with an accent that matches the language. That engine supported English, American and British accents, Italian, French, German and Spanish. Android 2.0 Eclair Android Eclair adds many new features. Eclair allowed users to add multiple Google accounts. Other features are a redesigned camera app, now with flash support, digital zoom, multiple scene selections and so on. The keyboard also got an overhaul, now supporting multi-touch, better predictions and a better look. The stock Android browser also got some upgrades and features, also Bluetooth 2.1 got support and many new features were added. Android 2.2 Froyo Froyo is another major upgrade for Android. First of all, widgets. You get much more widgets out of the box. You also get a dock, making all of your basic app shortcuts like app drawer, phone and browser available at all 5 home screens. The camera app also got some new updates now supported the LED flash for the camcorder. And again, UI for a camera app improved. Wi-Fi hotspot was now available. Certain devices like the Nexus One can be turned into a portable Wi-Fi hotspot that can be shared with up to 8 devices. The keyboard now also supported multiple languages. Apart from all this, you also get the usual security and performance upgrades. It was now possible to lock and erase your device remotely. Android 2.3 Gingerbread Gingerbread was more of a visual overhaul. It had a simpler UI and a bit smoother performance. It now also supported large screens. The keyboard again saw major improvements, it had a better look, better text predictions, better spelling corrections and much more simple copy paste process just by tapping and holding the wall. Android Gingerbread was also a huge landmark for gaming as it took better usage of sensors, CPU and audio. Another big landmark for Gingerbread was power and RAM management as it didn't keep the device awake as it usually did. Power management in the settings menu was also improved. Android 3 Honeycomb Honeycomb was a huge improvement, but not for phones. It was optimized to run only on tablets. It's our major UI design. It added a system bar, which is basically a notification bar, only that it's available throughout the UI, making it available everywhere. Because it's now optimized for tablets, many of the system apps had to be redesigned or at least modified to a certain level. That includes the home launcher, camera app, keyboard, browser, gallery, contacts, calculator, etc. Under the hood, however, not a lot of has changed. Minor 2D and 3D performance upgrades were made. The only major thing now is that it supported multi-core CPUs. Android 4 Ice Cream Sandwich Android Ice Cream Sandwich was announced on Google I.O. 2011. The final launch event was originally planned for 11th of October 2011. However, out of respect of Steve Jobs' death, it was postponed to 19th of October 2011. It was one of the biggest overhauls to Android in its history. First of all, it brought the Holo theme from Honeycomb to phones, but also had to be scaled down a lot. 
Out of apps also saw a redesign as everything was in whole style. It also saw major improvements under the hood as multitasking was much easier now. You also get the face unlock features, which allows you to unlock your phone just by looking at your front camera. Android Jelly Bean from 4.1 to 4.3. Android 4.1 was unveiled at Google's I.O. developer conference in June 2012, focusing on performance improvements designed to give the operating system a smoother and more responsive feel, improvements to notification settings allowing for expandable notifications with action buttons, and other internal changes. The goal of Android 4.1 was to give the user a better smooth experience, as Jelly Bean mainly focused on performance rather than UI. For example, when touch is detected, the CPU kicks to 100% to minimize lag. It was also optimized to run at 60fps on capable devices. Another big thing 4.1 featured was Google Now. Android 4.2 brings some more UI features like the ability to add widgets and quick settings to the lock screen. Tablets also get a screensaver or so called daydream. It also featured multi user support. Android 4.3 brought some new features like App Ops, a fine grained application permissions control system. Perhaps one of the most important things was the support for 4K screen resolution and some other low level changes. Android 4.4 KitKat. KitKat was announced on 3rd September 2013. On the very beginning, it was supposed to be called Key Lime Pie, but since not a lot of people know the taste of Key Lime Pie, the name was changed to the more popular KitKats. KitKat was not much of a major upgrade, but it did add some new features, for example new animations throughout the UI and wireless printing. It was also more optimized to run on low-end devices, especially those with half a gig of RAM. The minimum is 340GB of RAM. One of the most important features was OK Google, which activates Google Now remotely, just by voice. Android 5 Lollipop Lollipop was a huge overhaul for Android, both in performance and UI. First of all, it features the material design, which is present even today. It was unveiled under the codename Android L on June 25, 2014 during the Google I.O. It became available officially with an OTA update on November 12, 24 for selected devices. Design-wise, the look and feel of the UI was completely changed. Almost any device running Android Lollipop can run it on 60fps. There also some major improvements regarding battery consumption. And since phones are getting more and more powerful, support for 64-bit CPUs was enabled. Android Marshmallow was officially named on August 17, 2015 and was unveiled on September 29, 2015. Visually, Marshmallow and Lollipop are similar with the material UI everywhere. Only the app driver has seen significant changes and now has a vertical app list. If you use the Google Now Launcher, however, you most likely have this feature. And the Marshmallow brought a ton of new features, the most notable being Google Now on Tap. Google Now on Tap, when called, it will scan your screen and give you info about what's on your screen. Although it's still a bit rough around the edges, it's awesome. Those is also worth mentioning. To put it simple, it saves battery when your phone is not in use. USB Type-C support is added, as well as an improved RAM manager, improved app permissions, fingerprint API, automatic app backup, etc, etc, etc. By the time of recording this, Android Marshmallow is only available on selected devices and it should come to other devices quite soon. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know I made a few screw-ups in this video, but beg my pardon. While recording this, I broke my personal record of the amount of screw-ups I did while recording. Yay. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll be seeing ya. Peace. A theme. A theme which... A theme which be you... A theme which be... Yes. A theme which... Be, Although this may not be the worries Google Pad on It was the first version of Android to support third-party keyboards with rule Throughout the UI, copy, paste, upload to YouTube, auto rotate option and many 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 You got much you got much more widgets also Bluetooth 2.1 got support and many new features were added it was optimized to run only on tablet. Tablet. It was optim. It was optim. Opta. UI making get system available. What? Android Jelly Bean 4.1. Android Jelly Bean 4.1 to. Oh, in hell.
Android 4.0 oh, wait no. Android 4.1 oh goodness grief Android 4.1 was uh, <laughs> feel improvements to the fucking hell on the very beginning it was supposed to be called Keyla during Google I.O. it became available support for 64 bits and since and, and since oh goodness come on Android Marshmallow Blot Blot the Blot One called Google I want tap was screen screen Although it's still a bit rough around the edges it through ages What? Although I stood up stood Google now when USB Type C support is added as well as RAM management. Management. 